welcome to the second video on mechanics 2 in the last video we have discussed about uh, inertial uh, frame of reference and Galilean transformation so Galilean transformation is the transformation of the coordinate of an event from one frame of reference to another frame of reference which is moving with a constant velocity or it is a transformation of uh, coordinates of an event from one uh, coordinate system to another coordinate system which is moving with a velocity v but this Galilean transformation is not always true Galilean transformation is true only if the velocity of the second frame or the frame which is moving is very much less compared to the velocity of light at higher velocities the Galilean transformations uh, equations are not valid so in that case uh, uh, we have to look into the Lorentz transformation equation and we will be studying it later in 19th century uh, people believed that there exists an absolute frame of reference and every object including earth and every object move relative to that absolute frame of reference to find that absolute frame of reference Michelson and Morley conducted an experiment uh, which is known as Michelson Morley experiment but the outcome of that experiment was that they could not find the absolute frame of reference but later Lawrence uh, gave an explanation and after that uh, Einstein also gave explanation for that and the explanation is this uh, the experiment which Michelson and Morley conducted was correct there's nothing wrong with that but uh, the transformation equations are different and Lawrence gave a transformation set of transformation equation and Einstein also gave exactly the same set of transformation equation from a different approach uh, key point here is that the uh, Galilean transformation is true only if the velocity of the frame of reference is very small now in this video we will uh, look into uniformly accelerated frame of reference in the last video we were looking into a frame of reference which is moving with a constant velocity with respect to a frame of reference so we assign two people alpha and beta so alpha's frame of reference was at rest and beta's frame of reference was moving with a constant velocity in one direction now in this video we will be looking into a frame of reference which is moving with a constant acceleration last time it was moving the constant velocity but this time it was moving with a constant acceleration so alpha's frame of reference is stationary and beta's frame of reference is moving with a constant acceleration capital letter a now for simplicity we uh, omit uh, the letters alpha and beta the frame of reference which is stationary we call as um, unprimed frame of reference and the frame of reference which is moving we call as primed frame of reference now we have the equation of motion uh, we got the equation last time as a beta is equal to a alpha minus the derivative of velocity last time it was zero but this time it will be capital letter a because the velocity is changing it has a con it has an acceleration the velocity of this frame is not constant it is moving with an acceleration so it has an acceleration last time it has a velocity there's no acceleration so it was zero now the equation of motion uh, we can uh, rewrite it as we omit the alpha and beta yeah. so we'll write a prime there's acceleration in the prime frame of reference which is equal to a minus capital letter a in the prime frame of reference we got a prime is equal to a minus capital letter a now if you apply newton's second law of motion f is equal to mass times acceleration so f prime is equal to m a prime which is equal to m a minus m capital letter a now m a is the force which is in the unprimed frame of reference which is equal to f f is equal to m a if you substitute that f prime is equal to f minus m capital letter a now i am replacing the minus m as f fictitious so f prime is equal to f plus f fictitious uh, here f fictitious is equal to minus m a a is constant so f fictitious is proportional to mass of the object so since acceleration is constant f fictitious is proportional to mass of an object which is uh, similar to what we get in the gravitational field in the gravitational field uh, f is equal to m g where g is constant so f is proportional to m but there are some difference in the gravitational uh, force is actually a real force which is uh, arising due to the physical interaction of two body but f fictitious is uh, not arising due to the physical interaction of the object but it is arising 
due to the motion of the observer or motion of the frames of reference. The fictitious force arises due to the motion of frame of reference or observer. Now let's take a real life example for uh, this fictitious forces and uh, accelerating coordinate system for so non-initial uh, frame of reference. So one of the simple example what we uh, come across every day is an accelerating car. So in an accelerating car, how an object behaves is like one of the real life example of this fictitious force and accelerating coordinate system. Let us uh, take a pendulum which is hanging uh, inside a car. For this, I took out my car to the nearest empty road and I attached the pendulum inside the car and I accelerated the car and you can see the footage here. The camera is mounted inside the car and the car is accelerating. Then you see this uh, object, the pendulum is making an angle with respect to the vertical. So when the car is accelerating and if you observe from the car, you see the pendulum is making an angle with respect to the vertical. And if you observe from outside, still you see the pendulum makes an angle, but the pendulum is moving in one direction. When you sit inside the car and observe it, you would see the pendulum is stationary, but it makes an angle with respect to the vertical. But when you see it from outside, you will see the entire pendulum is moving. The top surface of the pendulum is also moving. The bottom side of the pendulum is also moving, but the pendulum makes an angle with respect to the vertical. So the car is moving. So the top surface of the pendulum, which is attached to the car, is also moving, but the bow is attached by, by a string. The string will pull the bob also along with it. Okay, so there will be a tension in the string. That tension will be pulling this bob. Now let us look into the uh, free body diagram. If you are sitting outside the car and observe the pendulum, what you would see is that the top of the pendulum is moving with the same acceleration of that of the car. Bottom side of the pendulum is also moving with the same acceleration of that of the car. And the pendulum makes an angle theta uh, with respect to the vertical. Now uh, there is a tension on the string, so the tension is pulling the bob of the uh, pendulum. Now let us uh, look into the forces acting on the body. One force is tension, so if you see the vertical component of force, a component of tension is acting along uh, vertically upwards and its weight is acting vertically downwards. So the vertical upward force is T cos theta and the vertical downward force is mg. So both of them cancels out and there will be an equilibrium in the in upward direction. So uh, T cos theta minus mg is equal to 0. Now when you observe it from outside, again like, so you, you see an acceleration at the top as well as an acceleration at the bottom. So the bottom side of the object is getting pulled with an acceleration capital letter A and the force acting at that direction will be equal to mass times the capillary ray. So force is equal to ma. And who is pulling that uh, bob of the pendulum? Who is pulling the bob of the pendulum? Is the tension, the component of tension along this direction, along the horizontal direction. So that component is T sine theta. So T sine theta should be equal to m times capillary ray. Now you can uh, simply uh, take the ratio of uh, T cos theta is equal to mg divided by T sin theta is equal to ma. So you will uh, cancel out uh, dt and you will get uh, tan theta is equal to a divided by g. So this is the angle. So angle will be tan inverse a by g. Uh, if you square uh, T cos theta is equal to mg and if you square T sin theta is equal to ma, then you add it and uh, take the square root, you will, you will get it. T is equal to m into square root of a square plus g square. That is the, the tension acting on the string. Now let's look into the frame which is inside the car. When let's look into a non-inertial frame which is attached to the car. So when you observe from the car, you see that someone is pulling the object back. So that pull is known as the fictitious force. Like uh, we have discussed a few minutes back, what is fictitious force? Which is equal to minus m times capillary. If you are sitting inside the car and look into the object, you see that the top side of the object is not moving, bottom side of the object is also 
not moving everything is like balanced you can you observe, when you observe from the car everything is balanced the, up, the upward and downward forces are balanced the left and right forces are balanced and upward downward forces is like a, the upward forces uh, component of tension t cos theta and downward forces weight mg and the left side force we do not know who is pulling so that force is known as the fictitious force so you get uh, there are someone pulling in this direction which is f fictitious which you got as minus ma but uh, that is equal to the force acting in that direction and that force is uh, nothing but the component of tension which is uh, t sin theta so you get t sin theta is equal to uh, m capital a and you get t cos theta is equal to mg from these two equations when you take the ratio you will get tan theta is equal to a by g and you square it and add it then you will get uh, t is equal to m into square root of a square plus g square when you observe from from the car and outside the car and if you add the fictitious force you get exactly same equations of motion and you could solve it and you you end up in same equations of motion imagine that if you if you do not know the fictitious force and if you did not include the fictitious force you won't get same equations of motions you will be getting different equation of motion another example of fictitious force and accelerating coordinate system that means like a, a non-initial uh, coordinate system or non-initial frame of reference is a rolling cylinder inside a car i have made a video on that i will be uploading soon if you have any doubt or any comment any questions please comment below thank you so much for watching this video i'm dr pradeep your physics teacher please watch the next video